Welcome, mercenary captains. We are about to found the greatest outlaw band in the Five Kingdoms. Here we are, just starting out four men and a pony. <laughs> the beginnings of a great band. And for some reason, these two little hoodlums think that they want to mess with us. The sides are drawn, and I think that these two outlaws may have bit off more than they can bargain with. Slice and dice into their rogue, and then we'll bring around a hammer strike from the side. We want to make sure that we engage this archer before he gets another shot off. When they are engaged in melee, they can only punch back. Quite a disadvantage to them when they want to use their bows. And we see... Oh, it's so close to being able to finish off this first one. Now to bring this to a close. We've had our fun. Galvanized. We do extra damage now. Be able to bring him around, offer some support to the ranger. Oh, the crit was just not enough. Can we find a way for the archer to be able to finish the job? What are the odds? 100%. Here we go. Put him down. And the first combat is done and dusted with. What is the loot? They were carrying 24 crowns. A damaged dagger that will allow us to deal some poison. I do really like seeing that. And our characters have our first couple level ups. Belizna, leveling up. Mm, double level up into willpower. That's not super interesting to me. That increases your morale. And then it also gives you a little bit of critical hit. The critical hit I do appreciate on the ranger. But I'd also like to just increase the dex so that the basic attacks do more damage. I'll take the dex, and now we get our first point of specialization. Do we want Valorous Audacity, Valorous Victory, or Valorous Support? The support is not really the ranger's focus here. We could be able to get Valor points every time this unit kills an enemy. Um, that's a little inconsistent. I know rangers can really dish out the damage, but you're not going to be able to guarantee that they're the ones getting the kills. Valorous Audacity I actually do really like on my rangers. Every time this unit ends their turn next to an enemy but is not engaged in combat, you gain a Valor Point, which is ideal for what the rangers want to do, slipping through combat but not being bogged down with any one enemy, being able to double team the enemies who are caught up fighting our friends. Rogalt the Swordsman also has a level up here. We're able to increase mm, movement, willpower, and crit hit. I don't love any of those. I think I'll take movement. Sometimes that is nice to be able to make sure that you can reach the right point in the battlefield. What do we want to give Rogalt? We can either make him a protector, a fighter, or a sword master. Sword master will do the most damage, but two valor points is pretty expensive. Fighter will be able to target an enemy for destruction, destabilizing them, taking away all the bonus from their armor, and protector will be able to give extra damage resistance to all of our friends. I usually like spreading the battlefield rather than keeping my units all together because there's enough area of effect damage abilities from the enemies. We're going to go with fighter here. Also, our ranger is going to go ahead and equip the poison dagger. We'll be able to sell off that uh, rusty old improvised shiv that she's been using up to this point. And here are the Plateau Stables. Let's see what adventure waits for us inside. Though the war in Edoran has been a boon for my business, I cannot help but feel for my poor horses. I can tell you aren't soldiers. Take them with you if you can. Otherwise, they would most likely end up dead on the battlefield through no fault of their own. Don't think I'll be able to afford any of your horses. <laughs> when I think of how many people don't shoe their horses, it makes me want to pull out the little hair I have left. Tell you what, buy a horse from us and I'll throw in the horseshoes for free. Horseshoes allow you to have a troop bonus movement speed in the world increased by 5%, which is very nice. We're going to do a lot of walking around here. And highlighted green, a little barrel that we can inspect. What do they have for us? They have a rope and a sandstone. Hmm. <laughs> well, every great outlaw band has to start somewhere, and we will begin. <laughs> we will take the archer, assign him to thief, and we will begin by shoplifting some rope. 
What are we getting? What do the ponies cost? 180. Yeah, we, we cannot afford that. Time to press on to town. Make our first stop. Pick up our early contracts. Be able to go from there. We want to be careful on how we begin here because if we push our criminal deeds too far too early, then we'll land in trouble with the law. And fighting off the sheriffs at the very beginning is a tall order. Let's go to the Forge Master. They'll be able to repair. Oh, I wish he was running a sale on the raw materials rather than coal. I don't have any use for coal until much later in the game. And over here at the Forge, this will unlock the Blacksmith Profession right away, which we want to give to the Brute that will increase him. Give him that plus one strength. Early on, it matters more than it does later in. I don't think that we have anything we can forge right now. Yeah, we're far off from being able to make any of these things. But we got the plus one strength, which is what mattered. Very similarly with the Apothecary, we're able to unlock Alchemist here. Do we want to give that to anybody? The other ranger I really want to be my tinkerer, and I don't think the fighter, I mean, I can give it to the fighter for now. Dex gives you a tiny boost to your, um, it's something with your critical hit. It's either your, I think it's your critical hit chance goes up with Dex, so it's not useless to him, but it's just mostly useless to him. Was anybody injured in that fight? My concoctions can heal the most grievous injuries. Be sure to hold on to the vials after using them. I do love that you hang on to the vials. You get the empty vials, and then you can come back and craft fresh potions to be able to put in them. Let's see the end here. So we have the informant. This guy will give us shortcuts to the major quests of the area. I don't think we're going to... I mean, we can't afford anything right now. But I can usually pick up those quests just by nosing around. The Emissary. Might you be looking for work? Our role as Emissaries is to ensure that all service requests are fulfilled. We regularly update our job offers. <laughs> By regularly, it's like every couple hours. It's crazy. So we want to be able to find a few easy to average jobs, hopefully in the same general area of the map. We're going to pick up this one up against the gang. The guard seems unable to deal with this issue single-handedly. I'm sure we'll be able to track them down and deal with them. We'll also grab freeing this old lighthouse. It's going to be a little bit farther away. I don't know if we're going to pull that one off. It would be nice to just cash a job very quickly and be able to move on from there. So we could stay at the end, but we still... Yeah, we can make it farther before we need to rest. And I don't think I want anything that he is selling right now. Not until we leave. We do want to make sure that we have enough supplies to be able to last at least two days out there. Is anyone running a sale? We can get a sale on grapes. Uh, that actually sounds pretty good to me. Food is kind of standardized across the game as to how much you pay per unit of food. Now we are off. We have found the old fishery. <laughs> oh, I can also grab some wood here. I like getting wood early. There's some very useful things to be able to craft for our camp. can never find enough wood in the early game. But then you're left with, like, logs and logs stacking on top of each other. But then we should be able to set up camp, do some early crafting. We've got our workshop here. Who do we want to be our tinkerer? I believe it's going to be the ranger because, yes. Oh, it's critical hit percent. Oh, that is, yeah, that's going to be juicy on the ranger, getting all those crits. I love it. Okay. Now we want to make sure that we have, what do we have? We have two iron ore only. Okay, so that's going to be one fish hook and one lock pick. Brilliant. But that was enough to be able to give us a knowledge point. So we get our very first knowledge point here. We have general party-wide buffs that we can take from this tab, and then you can unlock new recipes to be able to craft for the Tinkerer, new items that you can craft out of the, um, the blacksmith, and then you have these other two jobs that we have not found yet, and we have the apothecary table as well. The two that we're missing are the baker and the scholar. We're going to unlock them in good time, in good time. But right now, I want to spend the point on learning run. <laughs> we can't run from the law very well if we don't know how to run. All right, to be able to play the fishing minigame here, we have to select an angler. 
I'm going to switch our alchemist. He's going to be the one who just works all the odd jobs until we are able to expand the party and specialize more. This is what we're going to have. Let's see. Are we able to catch anything? Well, there we go. We fished out the, uh, the fishing hole and we broke our last fish hook on the final catch. I believe that as long as you don't mess up the minigame, your fish hooks will always last for three catches. Ooh, but what has happened over here? Ah, 12 crowns just laying around on the ground. All you have to do is be brave enough to search corpses. Now it looks like our mission is actually carrying us up into the mountains. The mine is over there, but that would be a fight. I don't necessarily want to go for that right now. And yeah, so it looks like we need to be able to surmount this mountain pass and the, uh, the outlaws are on the hideout in the snowy peaks. We must be able to catch our first bounty. Actually, we might want to make a camp here before we ascend to the, the heights and a more dangerous zone up here. So let's go ahead and do that. Smack down our camp and then we will uh, eat the stolen goods, be able to dispose of them. One of the things that you can be wanted for is possession of stolen goods. So if we eat them, we'd, we're no longer in possession. The one thing I'm worried about up here is being attacked by a bunch of wolves. The wild animals love roaming the forests, making them fairly dangerous terrain to be around in, but there's plenty of bandits that'll hide out in there as well. At the same time, if we can spot them before they spot us, we can potentially work our way around through the cover of the trees. So, as long as you are smart about what you are doing, you can use the trees to your advantage. And here they are, look at this, right out on the, the outlook. That is, that's awesome. Iruthonde the Little is the ringleader of these uh, hoodlums. Not much of a gang, I have to say. Not much of a gang. We will fight in the snow. So we want to be able to engage the ringleader as quickly as we can, because as long as they are unengaged, then they will always deal critical hits. And that's them and everyone part of their band. So we're going to run up, be able to pick up this spear conveniently placed into the ground. Chuck it right at her. Use her own lair traps up against her. And then slice and dice our way through her armor. Now that we have the poison dagger going, we want to be able to go in here and get the poison ticking as soon as we can. Poison is pretty potent at being able to cut through opponents, especially if you're able to stack it up. So the opponents will lose 5% of their maximum health at the end of their turn, and it is stackable. So right now it's not going to do very much, but if we get a couple stacks going, ooh, there we go. She was able to attack with an area of effect and poison us back. Touche, touche. And there's the other hoodlum. I wanted to be able to find where they were, but we're not, we don't have the movement to be able to actually engage them. So we're just going to take a swing over here. Move the archer up. <laughs> Call out the sight lines. And we'd be able to hit either one here. Mm, okay, I'm going to take the 100% chance rather than the 70-30. 70-30 is pretty reliable, but don't want to risk it. Okay, remembering what the ringleader did to us earlier... I am going to reposition the ranger so that we're not just sitting around to be attacked. Ooh, that hoodlum is just biting into our guy. But I think if we go ahead and use the destabilization, destabilization strike, and then lash out. Ah, we got it. Now we're galvanized, dealing more damage. We'll be able to bring this to a quick end. A quick and sudden end. Ah, oh, there was a bear trap hidden in the snow. <laughs> you gotta be more careful. There we go. The outlaws have been brought down and we found some salt. Look at that. They wanted to do a little bit of cooking up here in the Alpine Heights. We can give the first specialization to our brute. We're going to give him extra strength, extra movement, or a double on its critical hit. I love taking doubles when they fall on strength, con, and crit. I think we're going to go ahead and do this. Especially because if he ends up going down a path that's going to use heavy armor, that's going to take away from his chances at critical hits. 
Vanguard will give us Relentless Charge, able to disengage and then move through enemies dealing damage and slowing their movement. We can grab Smasher for Poisoned Impact, deals 9 damage to all units in the area and applies 2 poisons to bleeding units. So we would have to be able to find a way to deal bleeding and then we can add poison on top of that. I don't know how useful that's really going to be, especially with the build that we have right now. Or we can grab Weakening Below, which... I feel like is just incredibly powerful. Deals 6 to 8 damage to the target and applies weakening for 3 rounds, reducing their damage by 50%. We'll also unlock heavy armor for our brute, so I think we're going to go destroyer. Oh, he was also injured. Damage taken is doubled. That one is scary. We're going to go ahead, we're going to heal that one off. And I think we're also going to repair our equipment. Now the question is, is there anything else interesting out here that we want to do or do we want to rush back home and try and pick up a new contract? I kind of do want to just go back as soon as I can, spend this extra cash, and then be able to keep on exploring with some new contracts. Get those extra extra bonus bucks as we explore the world. The Lunda Farm is over there. I'm sure we will be back around this zone. Oh no. There are the sheriffs. Okay. Um, maybe we actually make camp right now. Oh, some wood. How did I miss that? We'll make camp right now, and then we will make a run for the town. Hopefully the camping time will also burn off some of the heat. We are wanted for theft in Old Wilbert's Sheepfold, theft in Wilbert's Fishery, and theft in the Plateau Stables. Our list of crimes continues. I really want to be able to get the cooking pot and the tent. So maybe we just wait to uh, stack up our iron to be able to get to that. I think we should check in on our progress here. So there are four paths to be able to unlock kind of larger missions for progress through winning the game. We have power and might. The path of power and might is fought with dangers and fearsome enemies, but great glory awaits those who prevail. Forge the best armor, recruit the bravest companions, and fight so your names echo beyond the farthest reaches of the five kingdoms. So this is like raw battles. Trade and wealth speaks for itself, being able to make a lot of money and completing missions, selling items, doing trade. You can actually do trade between the cities because they produce different resources and potentially want different resources. So prices are different depending on the town that you are in. And then crime and chaos is a selected path to victory. Level two, access to assassination missions in the list of bounties. Being able to progress through any of these other ones is still gonna be good. It will give us bonuses, but um, we're going to be very intentional about progressing here in Crime and Chaos. So we gain progress here on the bar to leveling up by hours spent being wanted, which we are right now, uh, crowns saved by stealing, and then we'll also gain it through being able to sell fencing stolen goods. So that makes you really wanted. You hit the double penalty of you got wanted when you stole it and then wanted when you sell it too. And then we have all these titles that we can claim. So fighting battles against the guard, fighting alongside other outlaws, capturing ponies, capturing animals, winning battles in ambush, fighting against the merchants, etc., etc. And finally, mysteries and wisdom, being able to get a lot of knowledge points, explore new locations, piece together ancient mysteries. That's probably the one that I have messed around with the least, but it's also very intriguing to me. We'll see how far we end up progressing in those other categories. And there is a band of sheriffs on the horizon, so we're going to stick to the trees and hope that they, they pass us by. Oh, there was a bunch of outlaws over there that almost decided to chase us. They decided to leave off at the last moment there. And now we'll be able to come in, cash out that early early objective that we grabbed and we'll see what we were able to pick up in its place collect the bounty 130 so that was uh, what 75 no 65 per <laughs> per member of the bandit gang that's not bad well they have another objective that would go with the uh, destroying the bandit lair that we had picked up previously so we may go for both of these kind of go back past the Lund farm I know we're gonna have to go back there ultimately to be able to fight Matthias uh, but we're a ways from being able to tackle him right now. Oh, a sale on raw materials for being able to repair our armor. All right, we'll stock up. Now, as long as those sheriffs don't decide to just do an about face and come back on us this way. Let's see, is there another little barrel here? 
Sometimes there's two. Okay, I want to just grab the one. As long as they don't come back towards us, I'm going to make a run for this location out here on the, the wharf. It's not quite a wharf. The peninsula. They have a jail over there. And uh, you get in good with the law if you can deliver prisoners captured. There we go. Tiltron Jail. So you can help reduce your suspicion and wanted levels. If you play nice with the law and bring in the other bad guys, then they'll look the other way no matter what you do. So <laughs> we'll pick up two chains here and yeah, two units of rope. I want to be cheap because we have to pay wages and we're really close to not, we can't pay two days of wages right now. Recipe for ether. I'd love to be able to get that eventually. Here we go. Hand over prisoners wanted minus 20. And they pay you pretty handsomely. Like, prisoners capturing, being a mercenary police force is very lucrative. Now, who are these guys? Sarna? Where are them refugees? We'll toss them out ourselves. We'll toss them all out. Yeah, I've been drinking. We all have. How do you know? You seared the summit. <laughs> all right, these guys are buffoons. So if we attack them, we get five leather. We can give them wine to distract them. I don't have any wine. Can I just leave? Hey, I can just leave. Okay. Uh, avoid the unnecessary battles. Stop right there. This salt mine belongs to her ladyship, Gontrad. I can't just let you walk in. So we can pay to be able to get in here. We can threaten him, which will increase our wanted level, or we can persuade him, which will spend some of our influence. Let's try and persuade him to see if we can get in. I want I want to be able to use the mine because I want to be able to forge some of my early items. As you wish, we can't mine the salt because of these two iron veins anyway. I don't really understand why you were so keen to go in here. Maybe for the iron veins, this guy. Yeah, I'll have a I'll have a word with your mistress. She needs to hire better help. So here we could steal up to 10 salt. I don't really want to steal more while we are already wanted. Okay, so now we have a new a new profession, Miner. Miner is going to be going to the uh, fighter right now who is just getting all the odd jobs. Constitution plus two, so it's a better one for him to kind of keep in between doing the other jobs. Did I read that right? That was five iron ore? Oh, this is so good. All right, we cannot go deeper into the mine and it doesn't look like there's any other iron veins that we can make a use of. So let's go ahead and talk to the foreman here. You cleared out the iron deposits. Well done, we can get back to work, yeah. And so we got our influence back that we used to persuade him. See, we can be we can be all right. So, oh, I can't set up camp inside the mine. It seems safe in there though. Okay, we'll use the camp here, hop over to the workshop, and then we can go down to the cooking pot. There we go, we can craft that up. Now we have the cooking pot that we'll be able to add to our, there we go, to our camp. We have new recipes and a new profession, cook. So we can assign somebody to be the cook. What does Cook give us? Also Constitution plus two. Okay, so that's just as good as um, Rogalt being a miner here. We can make bread if we find wheat. What are the other recipe options that we have? Not a lot. Wolf sausage, grilled carp, grilled pork, medium, medium rare mutton. But all of these would cost us knowledge points. And I don't want to be spending them willy-nilly because we've got cool stuff like I probably... Actually, want to grab these uh, these saddlebags, but we don't have leather to make them right now, so we'll we'll hold off for that. But we do probably want to spend one of our points and spending it over here. Oh, I'm torn. The poison mastery could be really good, being able to increase poison effectiveness by plus one percent, which would double the effectiveness of poison right now. Um, but also frugality would mean that we have to pay our guys less wages. That also could be. <laughs> <laughs> Tempting. Let's go for frugality. And then let's grab Poison Mastery. <laughs> we'll be able to get more knowledge points soon, won't we? Ah, uh, frugality does not reduce 
the current wages that you owe your companions. All right. All right, the sheriffs seem to have taken another path over there. Let's go investigate the Lund farm. Wow, this place is a mess. Christina Lund. How could they? We didn't even put up a fight, and they still killed our precious Lucilla. Mad with grief, her father chased after them toward the mill. I hope he caught up with them. Those thieves don't deserve to live. So we've seen the bounty for Matthias Lund. He's the boss of this zone. Hmm. <laughs> do I want your eel soup? Or do I want to be able to see what was locked up here? I kind of want to at least see what is inside, even though I'm trying to burn off some of the heat. All right, so we got our lock picking mini game. That means we turn up the volume and try and figure out this lock. Hey, it's so satisfying when you get the locks right. There it is. And now we have a thief apprentice reduces the amount of suspicion gained from all sources. Ah, so once you break into this, it's actually not even stealing to take the iron ore, sandstone, and the salt. Well, that's nice. There is our quarry. Let's press on before the sheriffs decide to turn around. Here will the coward and his hoodlum buddy. We're after all the losers here. Come on. We fought whoever the little, and now we have Kerwill the cowardly. Our archer has leveled up as a result of that battle. Let's go for increasing his dex. It gives him more damage. And now we're able to pick the specialization for our friend, the archer. We get Valorous Audacity, Valorous Victory, and Valorous Support. So we've already seen all of these either the same as the ranger. I think we grab Valorous Support here because it's going to be... Mm, do we? Is it going to be very likely that the archer is going to end up standing next to one of his friends? It's definitely going to happen more often than Audacity. He, I don't want him standing next to enemies, whether he's engaged with them or not. And then Valor's Victory, is the Archer really going to be the one taking the kills? I think we go for support here. And then we want to run away from these sheriffs. They're passing by on the road. Come on, guys. Get off the road, get off the road. Back around this bend. There we go, there we go. And now we can make camp. I think we're safe back here. Ooh, there is Matthias. Let's go into the mill, but the sheriffs are coming down this direction. We'll have to be quick. Hey, we're able to grab wheat. Man, he killed so many. There's some crowns. Professor's hourglass, okay. Oh, there's somebody alive. There's somebody still alive. We're just picking over the bodies. And here, Hakert is still here. He killed everyone. A real madman. I'm injured. Help me. It's nothing personal, Hakert. It's just... It's just business. Matthias wasn't out to kill you because you were an upstanding citizen, you know. Alright, let the sheriffs pass. What is this? Band of wolves are engaged in combat? What is what is happening? Captain Reinhard, you were there. You are wanted men, but if you give us a hand, we'll look the other way. Just this once. Okay, well, maybe I didn't want to just walk up and see what was going on here. Then again, if we help the guard militia, it sounded like he uh, maybe it'll reduce our suspicion level. On the other hand, we could pile in with the wolves and go against him. Ah, uh, let's, let's kill the wolves. Let's help them out. Fighting with the captain is giving us leader's inspiration. All the movement of our units is doubled, which is really fun. It means that we'll be able to get at helping each other be wherever we need to be on the battlefield. Unfortunately there, because the wolf has just engaged the leader, <laughs> that bonus is gone. At least the wolves don't have a leader that we've found yet. Let's see if we can end this fight early just by uh, kicking this wolf out. There we go. The opponents are demoralized, and the last one flees off into the woods. 
leaving us free to be able to pick over the spoils. We'll grab everything for now. We've got plenty of carrying weight. The carcasses are very inefficient food, but they are food nonetheless. Let's continue. Guard rewarded for you for your help, so we gain influence. And they didn't arrest us. I don't actually see where they were, slash are, but uh, we'll take it. We'll take it. Have we already seen? Okay, that's the sheepfold. There had been a lot of sheriffs in this area, so I am trying to be very cautious. Is there anything to inspect around this camp? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Oh, they've caught us. Oh, there. Hey, hey, the guard is busy chasing other criminals at the moment. We are no longer wanted. We are free to be able to pass by. After I was playing hide and seek with the sheriffs for so long, we were so close to just not being wanted anymore. All right, this is our contract, the old lighthouse. Yes, they want us to be able to knock out the bandits from this old lighthouse. This is supposed to be the hardest battle we have yet faced. Though, at the same time, it's only four guys. How hard can it be? Here we go, we have our very first chance to be able to capture one of our enemies so we can knock them out as long as we have chains. So they have to be below half health, they have to be engaged with another one of our friendly units, and you have to have someone come up from behind, you can knock them out, and then they are your prisoner, and we can drop them off at that uh, the jail that we found at the lake to be able to make a lot of money and make the guard like us, absolutely love us. So maybe maybe we'll go ahead and go for uh, two prisoners here. Ah, uh, yes, because we grabbed two chains. This will max out our prisoners. Now we do have to feed them on the way back, so uh, it's not it's not just free money. Oh, a lair location. After defeating a member of the bandits, you obtain a map indicating the location of their lair. So this is like the pinnacle of all the bandit fortification is there at the lair. We grabbed coal, an iron torque, a metal iron armband, and an outlaw tunic. There we go. We can upgrade our armaments. Oh, and we actually get to explore the location as well. So many rewards for this place. Is there actually anything? Okay, so there's not that much here. <laughs> At first I was like, there's a whole location. No, it's just this. We can use the lockpick now. All right. Pay attention to the sound. <laughs> I love that he's like, yes, I opened it. They're breaking all my lock picks, you dunce. Now people want to camp. Well, we will camp here where the bandits once were. We'll throw the wolf carcasses to the prisoners. And then we'll try and polish off some of these others. It may be time to see how capable we are up against the merchants. Would we actually be able to defeat a merchant company? So these guys are carrying an Inquisitor's Great Axe and a full battle plate. Highly, highly valuable, way out of our price range, and really cool if we could be able to grab these. They are level 3 with a Hired Killer and a Ravager along with the uh, Civilian. I wonder if he's actually going to take to the battlefield. So there's going to be like two super guards that we have to fight here. They are above our level, but we outnumber them, so maybe we have a chance. And of course we also gain extra Suspicion and Wanted level, which, uh, yeah, we've kind of been <laughs> hot. Hot topic of the town. So there's the hired killer. Yeah, so he is going to be here. He's got a knife of some kind and the ravager. Yeah, these guys stat line way over what we've got. I think the battle plan is if we can take out the ravager, we may have a chance. The thing is, it looks like both of these guys have big two-handed weapons that can potentially punish us for ganging up on them. We'll see how true that is. Do I want to go? Yeah, we'll lead with this stabilization strike. So he had that little shield 12% next to him there. That's his guard. That's how much damage his armor is preventing. So you have the gray bar, which is the durability of your armor. And then you have the red bar, which is your health. And then you also have a guard value, which is how much your armor is going to reduce the damage that you take. This guy looks terrifying. 16 strength and blade storm. Deals 14 damage to all the enemies in the area. And if the attack hits at least three units, applies fragility to all of them. It's going to be hard for her to hit three targets, I think. I, I hope. But then the Ravager here. 
also 16 strength, and beheading deals 11 to 14 damage to the target of the target. No longer has any armor. The damage is increased by 50%, so extremely dangerous enemy characters. I think we want to weaken one of them. Which one do we want it to be? Probably come across over here and throw weakening below. Even the, even Whiskwin, the civilian, is punishing us over here. Okay, how do we get out of this one? If we go for the backstab here, and then we will move around Whiskwin to this side. Hopefully he will attack here rather than getting up and destroying our friend right here. This could be a good chance for us being able to come in with the weakening blow. So there'll be less damage coming out of that higher killer. And then the hammer swing catching both of them and getting the damage boost because they both still had armor. I like that play while he is still up on his feet. And then there we go. So our rogue did distract him. Now I think I want to cut around to behind the hired killer. I don't want to present multiple targets for her broadsword. Definitely do not want to do that. Destabilization, cutting away the guard value, and then going ahead and getting a good stab in. I guess I come around to here and just shoot. And then I pray that we are out of range. I guess I can step back a little bit. There we go. Oh, she has such a big range, and she was not she didn't mind hurting her friend, so she got the fragility, which means that uh, we now take extra damage. Yeah, damage taken increased by 30%. And Gilwit is dying. Okay, okay. We'll see how much damage we were able to put out. Cutting her down to 12. That is not enough. I can throw out the taunt here, which will reduce her damage. But I mean, she's hurting her friend too, so I don't think I'll even taunt. And then I just need to get Gil Wit out of there. The archer can heal him up on the next turn and then we'll be back to his hammer swinging ways. Yeah, actually did more damage to Whiskwin over there. All right, come on. Oh no, I don't have first aid. Who has first aid? Who do I not have first aid on this party? I could. Oh, it's the rogue has first aid. Okay, the archer has no help. <laughs> How are you doing? You doing okay? Just walk it off. That's all I got for you. Galvanize the troops. We should be able to end things really quick right here. There we go. Grab the crowns. And is it still stealing to take these? So it's still going to be considered possession of stolen goods. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Ooh, this bruise means you take double damage. How is a bruise one of the worst conditions in this game? Who approved of that? And the ranger is already up to level 3. I love it. Uh, constitution or crit hit... I don't want her to be too fragile, but at the same time, I want her to really be able to punch. We're gonna go for the critical. And then if we look at our, our paths, hey, we got dead or alive, hours spent being wanted. We got our title. And we now have access to assassination missions in the list of bounties. What specialization do we want to give the ranger? They could be cutthroat meaning that they uh, can get Frenzy, high damage dealing. Again, two Valor points is very expensive, but we get all of these multiple attacks if you are considering ambushing them, which means you're hitting them directly from behind and they are already engaged with one of your other companions. That could be really good with the Poison Knife because it would give stacks of poison to the enemy. If we get Strategist, we get Smoke Screen, which you throw out a smoke bomb and then all the enemies within the area have to disengage and get attacks of opportunity. So if you're fighting in a clump, 
That's potentially a lot of damage. And we can also grab Poisoner. Applies three poisons to all units in the area. That honestly might be what we go with. One of the ways we can advance this path is by being killing enemies with poison. So finding a good way to be able to apply a lot of poison is definitely going to be to our advantage. And it seems like this could be an excellent way to just whittle down whole bunches of enemies as long as they are clumped together. Oh, the Inquisitor's Great Axe that we picked up from the caravan cannot be equipped by either of our guys. So the Destroyer uses maces, not axes, I suppose. Uh, potato, potato, come on, it's a big heavy thing that you swing with two hands. This would be so cool. Is there anything useful that we can craft? Actually, I think there was. If we go to the Knowledge Compendium, to the Tinkerer or the Workshop here, we can learn Saddlebags. And now, do we have... Oh no, we needed more leather to be able to craft that. Okay. I don't know if these sheriffs are actually after us. They're not red right now but our suspicion is extremely high. I don't want to risk it. <laughs> I don't want to risk it. Now we can forge the throwing knife here, be able to create a offhand weapon for our ranger. I like the idea of being able to use that. Oh, yes. Oh, what normal quality bonus failed? I hit everyone perfect. I hit every one of those. You insult me, game. I have such a terrible relationship with this smith. Like, I'm one of his best customers, but at the same time, <laughs> trying to sell stolen goods all the time. All right. Will you buy it? The dubious origin of your item has raised suspicion, and you will not be able to sell them here as long as you are wanted. Yeah. He's like, I've seen your type before. No, I don't, I don't want that battle axe. I know you didn't make it, and you didn't buy it. Oh, this is disappointing. There's no assassination contract waiting for us here. It said that we had unlocked them. Access to assassination missions in the list of bounties, I guess. Nobody in uh, Tiltron, this region, needed to be assassinated. While we were traveling through this snowy mountain pass, we were waylaid by a pack of wolves. So it is time to be able to recruit some new wolfish friends. We can do the exact same thing as we do to capture prisoners but with animals and then they become our own trained animals. Though the, the training is a loose word, we're going to have to be able to improve our archer down the Beastmaster class if we want to really have uh, control over them, but they will still be able to fight with us and help us out in the coming battles after we have captured them. They're also usually injured, so need to be able to take care of them, but basically they become a uh, assistant to the party who doesn't require any wages, because what are wolves going to do with money? I believe there's one more, yeah, there's one more who ran out into the, uh, the fog of war in maps with extremely difficult weather conditions. You actually do not have perfect line of sight like you usually do. So you have kind of this clouded zone and then this whiteout zone you cannot see into at all. If you bring torches, that helps sometimes in different conditions. I don't think it really helps in the snowstorm here though. So uh, we are left to our own devices to be able to try and stop the wolves from jumping out of the snowstorm at us. I would really like to be able to capture this last wolf as well. So we're going to try and play things out to very intentionally grab him. So we want to back up our archer and the rogue. Slide her back around this way. We want to draw the wolf out. So he needs to be engaged with another party member, just like so. And he needs to be below half health. And then capturing requires the use of a primary action. So let's see if we're able to get around to him. We may have backed off too far there, honestly. Because that was going to take two rounds to be able to get someone behind the wolf. Yeah, Saul can't make it. Okay, here's the play. 
Get Jezebel around the back and throw the capture. So here, knocks out an animal while it is engaged with an ally. It will join your troop after combat ends, and this requires rope. Hey, we have two little, little friends, little furry friends to be able to add to the party. And we'll grab all the rest of these supplies. I don't know how long it's going to take to be able to cross this mountain pass, but there we go! Two wolves, they're not even injured. Oh, it's so good. So here we can see they are level two. Oh, they do. He has a sprain. He can no longer be chosen to complete tasks. Well, I would never send a wolf on a task anyway. We can get the level up points on them here. They, I believe, follow the average level of the party. The, the animal experience works a little bit differently than your main characters. I don't have a perfect handle on it. Um, but here, we're actually able to take Saul up, give him better critical hit, and we can take him down the Beastmaster path. This is so good. He has an ability called Attack. All allied animals next to target attack them with an attack of opportunity. So for one Valor point, he'll be able to get two attacks off the wolves if the wolves are both focused on the same enemy. I am definitely going to be going down the Beastmaster class because that also feeds into, if we pull it up here, the um, poacher's title for crime and chaos, capturing a lot of animals and thus being able to add those animals and use them within our party. And so we can then go down to Beast Mastery at level 5. Animals can be controlled in battle, which makes them so much more reliable. The options that we are passing up here are Hunter, giving us a recoil shot, deals 5 to 10 damage to the target, knocks them back 2 meters, and applies slowdown. You can get this ability basically off of uh, one of the particular types of bows you're able to use, so I don't see too much value here. Obviously the slowdown is really good for the archer being able to kite enemies because they get knocked back and then have their movement speed reduced, and that's kind of that's really what you're paying the valor point for. And then you also have barrage targets a specific area, performs attack of opportunity against the first three enemies crossing the area. Really good if you want to move the archer first, and you know the enemies are going to be advancing on you. We may have to grab another archer character to be able to make use of one of these other abilities, but right now we're going for the beastmaster. Let's see our wolves in action here. All right, boys. If you kill an enemy, then you will earn a name and a place in the party. Honestly, so far the wolves are doing a pretty great job of tying up these enemies going after ones that are convenient to use. I was intentionally placing them together over here so they could move in, hopefully against the same target. But now let's see how well we can make use of the attack command. So this guy's about to go next, and we'll see if the wolf can just finish him off. If he doesn't, we'll be able to use the archer. There we go. Drops him. Now do we go up against the henchman or pop the raider? I think we just aim for the henchman here rather than taking the uh, the chance of hitting our own wolf. Now we'll move in and start to apply poison. Whoa, the crit and the poison hurts so much. All right, as much as I would like the poison to finish them off again, we don't want them getting another swing in against Jezebel here. And now, what's the play? Throwing knife could honestly kill this raider. Are we able to get a good shot right here? Mm. <laughs> Let's take it. No, we got our friend in the back. All right, that's the price you pay sometimes. But we'll move her back over here to be able to pick up a valor point. Yeah, I probably should have just played it safe because we can still finish him off just with a basic attack here. And the opponents are demoralized. We have victory with the help of our wolves. I believe that they performed really well there, actually. Really well there. Ooh, that is a big ol' big ol' hammer. Do we want to bring that into play for Kane? So if we were to have Kane pick up this Renegade's two-handed hammer versus the rusty two-handed hammer that he has right now, his basic attack would actually change instead of having uh, Ram right now, which he gets to use on the same turn that he moves, 
and does bonus damage against targets with armor, he would have an attack that he has to set up the turn before, and then he does a more powerful attack, but at a long delay, which makes it significantly less um, consistent and controllable. I think right now, we are not going to go for that. But we do have full access to the mine right now. Is there anything laying around in these crates? Can we go in deeper? No. Hey, and Abner has even become an apprentice miner. That means he has a chance, if you play the minigame right, to be able to find precious stones while mining. But he did get us just a pocket full of iron ore and we are now over encumbered. So, oh, we can't camp in the mine. Sometimes you can. Some of these locations you're able to camp in, and then you get an extra extra zone here that you're able to see. Let's see, is there anything that we want to create? We want to be able to get saddlebags for our ponies to increase our carry weight, but we need more leather for that. And we would like to be able to bring in the tent. We also need more leather for that. So definitely looking for some fights against the wild animals to be able to pick up that extra leather. You have received a letter bearing the Baron's seal. We have a client to meet at the border crossing. This is, I believe, it had the icon of crime and chaos. This is our new mission here. So I believe it's time to go and see who this Baron is and what he might want with us. As we approach the border crossing, I wonder what sort of man this Baron might be that he would send for us knowing our lawless reputation. The Gozenberg border crossing. Here we are. I believe this is our contact. Do I want to talk to anybody else first? I may not look wealthy, but if you pay for my passage, you won't regret it. Trust me, my cousin lives in the city-state of Gozenberg, in the Goldsmith district to be precise. If you can lend me the money, I promise you will pay you back threefold. I'm not lying, he truly does exist. You have to believe me. Yeah, I don't know. Not a charity, you know. You need an official pass sent to Gozberg. Unless you are willing to pay up, you know. So, 200 gold to be able to get across or a border pass. Is our contact going to want us to meet over in Gozberg? Mm-hmm. This guy's stuck. Hey, you over here. Act as if I were an ordinary merchant. Whatever you do, don't attract the guy's attention. I have a mission for you from the Baron. If you succeed, he'll take you under his wing and show you the ropes. You are to go to Tiltron Jail, recruit a woman named Septella, just as you would any ordinary mercenary, and bring her back here to collect your reward. Easy enough, right? And we will also receive poisonous oil recipe for our alchemist. Sounds easy enough to me, Wormwill. Though why you would have a band of mercenaries do it leads me to believe it may not be quite as easy as you let on. But know that this young woman is very special to the Baron. Take good care of her and don't take too long. I'll be waiting for you. Off we go to the jailhouse and I'm going to try and dodge these sheriffs on the way because I happen to still be wanted. It was really weird. My heat level wore off completely and then it just spiked and nobody was around. I'm not sure exactly what did it. Ooh, there's the ghost hunt. Oh, the challenge. It draws me, but uh, I don't think we can handle it right now. Besides, we are on a mission for the Baron, and he said not to take too long. I don't know if any of the missions in this game actually keep track of time, but the game does very carefully keep track of the hours that pass in real time, so I'm going to treat it as though we should actually be quick with this mission. There is Septella over in the corner. Let's talk to her. What do you want? Hmm. I can recruit her. We can figure out a little bit more about who she is. She's a hoodlum. Level 3, with a poison dagger. Doesn't seem anything extraordinary about her stat line. So, let's go ahead and uh, recruit her to the band. Hope she doesn't cause any trouble. Just a second, mercenaries. Before I come with you, I have a score to settle in at Tiltron. And you're going to help me. Let's just say this service is included in your contract. Hmm... Alright, so they didn't tell us that the full job 
is going to entail this. Lieutenant Perrault threw me in jail like some two-bit crook. That idiot didn't even recognize the Baron's daughter. Aw, oh, spoiled little brat. He could have blackmailed the most powerful outlaw in the Five Kingdoms, but no, he put me in a seedy jail cell with nothing but stale bread and water. I'll not suffer this humiliation a second longer. This pigsty of a province will know who I am. I won't leave Tiltron until they quake in fear at the mere sight of me. First, we'll attack a few guard patrols. Three or four should do the trick. Then the good lieutenant himself will come after me. And that's when we'll get him. Got it? Let's go. Oh, so we're going to just wage outright war with the guards. Well, I <laughs> we did not set off along this path because it would be easy. Attack the guard and make sure Subtel is never forgotten again. All right, so we're in it. We're in it for the long run here. I would honestly like to be able to make it into town to heal up, armor up, etc. But we should probably camp here. During a stormy night, we find our perfect opportunity to waylay a band of guards. Oh, there. Show me what you've got in there. No, no, no. How about I just show you the other end of my sword? This patrol is considered a level 3, and they have 6, 10 soldiers in here. So it's 10 against 6 with 2, uh, two wolves. Alright, we're going to have to be very much on top of our game to be able to manage this. Oh, this Baron's daughter is going to be the death of me. Look at all these enemies. This is crazy. Okay, what is the tactic? Here is Captain Ryum. He is providing all of his troops with a double movement as long as he is not engaged. And that is very dangerous for us because it would mean that they can really leverage their overwhelming numbers to bring us down and uh, wipe us out quite easily then. So I think that what we are going to do is we're going to try and do a pincer formation so that we don't get caught against all of them together in the middle. I want to send Abner in against the captain to be able to disrupt that buff. Uh, we did a little bit of leveling off screen, so now one of the wolves is back, one of the boars is gone. And uh, Abner is an absolute monster. This guy is now Abner the Braggart, but he triggered several nickname uh, triggers because of feats that he was accomplishing in battle, and that gave him a lot of attribute level ups beyond just his um, what you get from leveling up to the next character level. So he is incredibly powerful right now, and he has basically the best equipment that I could give him. I forged him a better shield and a better sword. So he, he gets the job done. Okay, pincer formation felt like a bad idea. We're all here in the center. Let's go, Abner. I'm gonna run him in immediately here to be able to break up that uh, movement buff. Let's see what we get. Huge damage. Oh, it's so good. No crits, unfortunately, but then we are going to use protection because he's kind of surrounded here, so the next attack against him isn't really going to be able to do anything. And this guy... Hey, when you've got your normal movement, not even able to engage. That's what we need. We need them to waste a lot of turns because... We are outnumbered and outclassed. These guys, pound for pound, are better than us, especially because we have just the two wolves counted in our number. And they are not nearly the level of these soldiers. This this one-on-one -on -one gets won by the foot soldier, and he doesn't even sweat. I think we bring Jezebel up here, use the spear throw. And while the enemy is distracted fighting the wolf, we will try and capitalize. I want to position in a way that will block him from being able to run around and attack both of us. He might still be able to do it if he has enough movement here. Ah, he does not. Excellent. Okay. Then, we want to get the poison going on all three of these guys. I saw they were kind of clumped up, so this is our opportunity to start stacking the poison, especially because Septal and Jezebel are both able to apply poison on their basics. So there we go. We'll see how high and how potent we can really make the uh, poison damage come through for us. Maybe we'll even be able to kill somebody while they have armor up. That would be... I don't know if that's really possible with the, the way that the game is set up, but I would love to see it happen. Hmm, 
this guy pretty easily gets in range unless we run up to the top here. And then Karthna's basic actually pulls the enemy into her, and if this engages the enemy with her, she gets an attack of opportunity, which is where most of her damage comes through. So she's a good piece to be able to use. Oh, he wanted to attack. Oh, no, he hurt his... Did he hit his captain? I think he hit his captain. I wasn't watching very carefully. I was explaining what Karthna does. She's a good piece as long as you can get fresh engagements for her every time. Otherwise, her basic attack really falls off and uh, looks pretty pathetic. Okay, so this guy's allies are kind of blocked up behind him and I think the phalanx soldier is gonna go after the wolf. So we will go ahead and come in to engage the foot soldier down here. We'll use weakening blow to be able to get the engage and then ram. We really need to give Kane a better hammer. He's still using the uh, junky old thing that he had when we first started the game. But I haven't been able to get the materials slash the knowledge points to uh, figure out what to forge him next. Oh, these three guys all up against Abner. They're not even doing that well. <laughs> that is the best part. Okay, now these two up top are going to go. I think I want to push Saul down this way. <laughs> there we go, the enemy's just running the wrong direction. That's what we need, wasted turns. More wasted turns. Oh, that hurts. Karthna's not looking good. Not looking good at all. And then this enemy, of course, the one that is attacking Karthna wants to go next. What am I supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to do with this game? Um, okay, okay. There's a plan. We still have we still have this in hand. We can go for the destabilizing strike out of Abner. Executing another captain, another notch in the belt. And then we move him up here. We throw the taunt to pull the attention of the phalanx soldier across, and then we still have the basic. Uh, did it not go? There we go. And honestly, I'm still going to use protection. Because he's going to take the hits from these guys as well. It would be really nice if we could get Jezebel down to be able to use her first aid and take the bleeding off of Abner. Because bleeding is percentage and he has a high enough health that it's really ticking down. But she cannot reach right now. Honestly, we c I think that we leave Jezebel up here. As much as I want her to be able to help out Abner. We just go for max poison to be able to win this. Because also, Septel is very important. If she dies, I think the mission is over. Maybe I should actually go over and help her instead of the wolf. I should definitely do that. Eight stacks of poison. So what is that going to do to him? 40%! 40% of their health is going to be gone. Alright, that's pretty great. And let's watch that. 21 poison damage. Okay. So we actually, we can kill guys, even if they have their armor up. That is amazing. Is this time for Cutting Maelstorm? Cutting Maelstorm would be able to get the kill over here, and it would do a chunk. I don't know if I really want that. I would like to be able to finish this guy off, but I mean, I could just do that with her basic, too. We just uh, move over here, and then throw Arm of Justice. That's not bad. And now she still has her movement, so we uh, move her up. Yeah, move her up. We want to keep her safe. Very low health with only 8 health right now. Ugh. And this guy decides to run back. Okay. I don't know what made him change his mind. He's still just as locked in as before. Ooh, big crit. 
big crit. We're going to galvanize the troops just to be able to get a few more valor points. I feel like we're going to end up spending them all here, but that's fine. And then I honestly want to draw the lieutenant's attention up to attack Saul to spread the damage and give Abner a better chance. The wolf is still going. Okay, Kane. You just keep on blocking up this portion of the map. You're doing what I need you to do. These two heavyweights just can't get past each other. There's the haymaker on the Saul, but not onto Abner, that's the key. This one's onto Abner. And he's engaged. Great, great. Jezebel, how far can you make it? You cannot make it far enough. Yeah, it's the bleeding that's really bringing Abner down more than uh, anything that they're able to do to him. Okay, so we really need... Yeah, Jezebel has to make the run down. Though... No. Oh. Hey, we got the crit. Nice. As much as I wanted to see the poison blow him up while he had armor on, uh, he would have gotten an extra attack there against Septal. So we gotta run her down. I think we go as far as we can. Oh, that's a bad spot. That means this hammer man is gonna have a field day with us. Okay, let's keep on applying the poison because that works so well up top. There we go, stacks of poison and call it a turn for her. <laughs> These guys in the backfield are so confused. They have no idea of how to get involved in the battle. And now he is going to try and throw his haymaker. I'm worried that he's going to move in and be able to catch both Jezebel and Abner. Really not like that. Not like that at all. So... Uh, it's so hard when I want him to be next to other allies to pick up the valor points, but then the lieutenants just come in and uh, use their hammers. All right, just got to start kiting around, and he's also bleeding. There we go, just goes against Jezebel. That's great, because he also does not engage her. And now he's going to try and kill off my wolf. Can I prevent this from happening? Maybe? I mean, he's got 26 health. That's way more damage than she'll be able to do. Uh, so that means that he would smack her and drop her. I'd rather he kill the wolf in that situation. So we will actually move up close. It makes our... T oh, no, wait. We have Wrath. Oh, I forgot that we had Wrath. We might have been able to pull it off. I don't know. She doesn't hit too hard. Oh, she still engaged him. Okay, well now we're in this. 15 health. All right. Ah, he drops her. Okay. Poison gets him though. I don't think it was worth it. I think we should have let him kill the wolf and then die to the poison and still had Karthna up. Kane at least is winning his fight, but the wolf finally went down, so now they're going to be able to loop around. This wolf is still alive, though. Coming in. <laughs> that lieutenant's just going to kill him pretty easy next turn. Okay, new round is starting. Jezebel, you know what you have to do. Heal Abner. Get that first aid going. Beautiful. And then we're bringing this guy down. Kane is about to have company down here, so maybe we should make sure he finishes off this foot soldier in the uh, the immediate future. 
At the same time, I don't necessarily want to spend Valor points on it. Hmm. Oh, I don't like those odds. Uh, but I needed to be here to be able to still make it next to the wolf to pick up the valor point. I guess we go for better odds. Come on. Oh, yes. Saul has such a high variance on his bow that uh, it's a little iffy on if he's going to come through for us. But there he came through in a big way. Okay, Abner, if you can finish off this lieutenant before he does anything funny. And the crit? Uh, the crit is glorious! Okay. So what's the play here? We're going to have Septal be able to finish off this lieutenant. So, honestly, we bring Abner up. Up to the front, my friend! And use your protection when they engage him, as long as it's a foot soldier rather than the phalanx soldier, he'll be able to make the valor point back. There we go. Okay, we might actually weasel this out. We might actually weasel this out, that'd be amazing. We're gonna bring Karthna in close to Jezebel for the heal. Though Jezebel needs to heal Saul before he bleeds out. We really need a second character that has first aid. That's what we need. The loyal wolf interposing itself with the opponents. Ah, there he goes. Okay, I hope... Jezebel has enough movement to be able to get in, do the heal, and still get make contact with the Phalanx Soldier. It's very hard to judge if you're taking an angle rather than the shortest route. But uh, we'll go ahead and engage him with Abner here. Slice will get the engage, and then will the strike... The strike will bring him very low. All right, we'll go for it. Oh, the crit almost finished him off. Abner is just a machine. Okay, Jezebel. This is your moment to shine. You can oh no, I don't have the valor points. Oh, why don't I have the valor points? Okay. Saul's gonna bleed out now. Of course that foot soldier wants to go again. Of course he does. He has 51 health? That's so much. Okay, well. Abner, gotta use the taunt to be able to pull off the heat from our Baron's daughter. And then come in with the slice. Yeah, we have to save the Valor Point to be able to use first aid off of Jezebel, so... Kind of stuck. Does she want to use it now? I think so. We'll go first aid onto Saul. And then move her into position to be able to strike his guard. He gets surrounded, so we get the damage buff. We even crit! Pretty good, and we'll be able to pick the Valor Point back up right here. I'm worried about what the Lieutenant with the Big Hammer is going to do to us, though. Very worried. Hmm, maybe nothing if I'm able to engage him with Kane here, actually. That would be the best outcome. Now we're galvanized, and he has Fury- Oh no! Kane! How are you, do you not? 
this gets blocked off by that rock? Oh, it got blocked off by the rock. Amazing. I was gonna have Kane engage him. And Kane's basically full health. He doesn't care. He's gonna do so much damage with this next attack. Maybe this demoralizes them with that backstab. Yes, no, maybe so. No. She did exactly what I didn't want to have happen. She opened up the middle position for him to hit all three of us. Amazing. Amazing. Because I could have had Saul come in and kill that guy. But then I knew that the, uh, the other enemy would just move right into that position because it's such a good one to be able to destroy us. Yeah, Karthna is just limping around out here. Help me! What a knockout drag out fight. All right, we're gonna end this, guys. We get two, two attacks, two turns. Be able to get him. But uh, Abner's got it. Woof. Cain has become a tormentor. What, is, what does that mean? What does a tormentor mean? Does it have any... Oh, here it is. Critical hit and critical damage increased by 5% when a two-handed weapon is equipped. That's what tormentor means. So we gained a trait. That's amazing, actually. Oh, those are the wolf carcasses. We're not, we're not going to eat our dogs. We'll put them back. We'll leave them where they lie. They were the bravest of us. Karthna finally leveled up. Closing in on uh, being the same level as the rest of the party. Hmm. Maybe movement is actually worth it. If it's a double level. Nah, we're going to go for constitution. <laughs> and then, how do we want her to be able to make um, valor points? Here's the thing. Valorous Chain sounds really good if we equip an axe that has an area of effect attack. Her current one does not, but we gave her the Executioner's ability, Cutting Maelstrom. So she swings out all around her, and then she'll be able to keep on repeating her attacks for as many enemies are in the area. Which means she could do a lot of damage that way, and it's expensive. So it'd be nice to be able to make um, a lot of Valor points back if she could do that. Be able to get a Valor Point back and then do her basic attack, hit multiple enemies again, etc, etc. Valor's Duel is just a really safe pick. Um, that actually synergizes very well with the style of weapon she has right now, trying to get a lot of different engagements. And Defensive Stance I don't love because you have to spend your basic action just defending. Um, and then your criteria of being able to get the Valor Point is conditional on an enemy still choosing to come and engage you. I think we're going to go for Valorous Chain, foreseeing in the future a uh, different axe that might have a, a broad sweeping strike. And if it's terrible, I don't know. We'll be able to work around it. Okay, we are right outside of town, so we don't need to spend our resources. Oh, here we go. Well done, well done, an excellent start. Two more and the lieutenant will have to come after me. Yeah, yeah, amazing. We're also exhausted. So we're going to limp into town. We come into the tavern with the max wanted level. Drinks for me and my men. We don't must like your kind around here. I didn't say you had to serve them with a smile. Okay, well. Extra bands of guards are roving all around the village. We just have to knock down two more to be able to progress and hopefully meet our patron, the Baron. But that will have to be for another episode. In the meantime, I need you guys to help me out. I need a name suggestion for Kathna and any wolves and boars that we potentially recruit in our future travels. I kind of have a theme going on here. So... Hopefully you guys can come up with something clever in the comments and I'll be able to implement it in the next playthrough. It might be an episode delayed because of the order of recording, but I am reading the comments and I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about this one. Subscribe if you want to make sure that you see when the next episode comes out. Until then, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.